Hello, friends. To solve a problem, people sometimes resort to some very unconventional methods, looking at which you might not even be able to tell right away that they're actually trying to do. These unusual and sometimes even unbelievable methods are what our video today is about. A reservoir in Los Angeles doesn't look like a regular artificial lake. It's all because of the millions of black balls that completely cover the water's surface. Following the most brutal drought in the history of California, the state was forced to introduce a number of restrictions on the use of water resources. Moreover, the lack of rainfall in the area caused the death of more than 12 million trees, which also meant significant damage to the habitat of wild animals and birds. It was decided that radical measures were necessary to fight the consequences of the drought and to prevent it from spreading. About 96 million black plastic balls were thrown into the Los Angeles Reservoir. They would provide shade for the reservoir, improve the water quality, and protect it from the rapid growth of algae. Moreover, significantly less water would evaporate from the reservoir when it's covered with a layer that is impenetrable by sunlight, which means that its reserves could be stored for a longer time. The Los Angeles Reservoir wasn't the place where this technique was used. The same method of covering the water surface with a layer of balls has been previously used in the Elysian and Ivanhoe Reservoirs for the same purpose. If you decide to visit Botswana in South Africa and drive by local farms, you will definitely notice one feature that will make the local cows differ from the cows in any other country. Botswana's cows have eyes drawn on them on both sides of their tails. Who does it and why? Neil Jordan, one of the conservationists collaborating with the Botswana Predator Conservation Trust, has once witnessed an unusual scene. A lion that had been tracking an impala for half an hour suddenly turned around and abandoned his attempts to catch this animal. The lion did it immediately after the impala turned towards the lion and their eyes met. Neil decided that it was the eye contact that influenced the lion's decision to stop the hunt. What if lions didn't have the opportunity to sneak up on their prey so that there would be no eye contact? That's when Neil proposed to conduct an experiment on one of the farmers in the north of the country. One herd of 39 cows was kept as a control group, while the other herd of 23 cows got eyes drawn on both sides of their tails. The paint lasted for a little over three weeks, and in that time, the results became obvious. Three cows from the first herd got killed by lions, while not a single cow from the second herd was touched. I was very reluctant to share the idea at first because it does seem a bit wacky. But when we ran the experiment, I decided that perhaps it wasn't such a bad idea. The problem with lions is very acute in Botswana. It's illegal to kill them, but conventional protective methods, including fences and guard dogs, don't really help to keep the livestock safe. One of the largest populations of lions lives in Botswana now, about 3,000 individuals, and it's a real headache for the local farmers. Huge amounts of money are spent trying to preserve the lion population. So the fact that regular paint can help solve the conflict between the wildcats and the farmers is actually a great achievement. Why did China create a 100,000 duck army? This army will travel from China to Pakistan to fight the locust plague. The ducks will be sent from the eastern province of Zhishong to Pakistan, which borders the Zhishong province. Luli Xi, a researcher from the Zhishong Academy of Agricultural Sciences, told the local newspaper, the Ningbu Evening News, that the ducks have already proven to be an effective method for fighting the locust plague 20 years ago. In the year 2000, a 700,000 strong army of ducks and chickens was sent to Zhishong to battle a locust infestation, which destroyed over 3.8 million hectares of crops and grassland. At the time, the researchers have found that ducks were more effective than chickens in destroying the devastating pests. One duck is able to eat more than 200 locusts a day, Lu Lizi said. Lu Lizi also said that ducks were more likely to stay in a group 
which makes it easier to manage them than chickens. He also added that using ducks as biological weapons was a cheaper and more environmentally friendly alternative to pesticides. The state television network China Global Television Network, or CGTN, posted a video on Twitter saying that 400 billion locusts are approaching China from the India and Pakistan border. 100,000 duck troops are gathering to prepare for the potential emergency. The locust infestation of Pakistan has prompted the Prime Minister Imran Khan to declare a national emergency to protect the crops and the farmers. Information Minister Ferdas Ashik Awan said, We are facing the worst locust infestation in more than two decades and have decided to declare a national emergency to deal with the threat. Have you ever seen bottles in the wheels? It can often be seen in the northern part of Russia. What are they for? Perhaps they're there to cover some parts of the wheel? Instead of a tire valve cap, maybe? Under the influence of extremely low temperatures or even in normal climactic conditions, it is possible that the brake pads may freeze or get jammed but the driver won't feel it while it's moving at high speed. Having traveled some distance, the tire will become worthless, or worse, it could even explode. So the empty bottles are installed in order to avoid these kind of consequences. The driver can control the rotation of the wheels by looking in the rearview mirror. If the bottle moves, it means that the wheels are not jammed and are springing correctly. Have you heard about this method? The coast of the northern Australian state of Queensland is a true tropical paradise. You can meet anyone on the shore here. Pretty girls in bikinis, families with kids, surfers, and people in tights. Yes, despite the hot weather, men and women wearing nylon tights aren't uncommon on the beaches of northern Australia. But this strange fashion is easy to explain. Back in the 19th century, when the Queensland coast was not a resort, but a hard labor area, unexplained deaths in the water had been reported there. A person could swim far from the shore or stand waist deep in the water, it didn't matter. They would suddenly pass out and die for no apparent reason. The doctors could determine that the death was caused by cardiac arrest, but couldn't say anything more specific. Local divers told stories of people feeling sudden, excruciating pain as if a red-hot piece of iron was being pressed against their body. People living in the tropics were well aware of the many different dangers awaiting them in the water. Predatory and poisonous fish, sea snakes, and jellyfish found off the coast of Queensland have all been well studied and haven't been seen near the victim in any of the deaths or attack cases in the water. The local indigenous Irakanji people believed that a terrible, invisible demon lived in the water that could cause unimaginable pain and even death at its discretion. The white population of Queensland was a bit more realistic and believed that the swimmers could be attacked by some miniature creature in the water, which they called the sea wasp. No one could say what it was or what it looked like. In some cases, strange red marks, similar to those that a jellyfish would cause, were found on the bodies of the injured swimmers. All the survivors of the attacks by the unknown creature insisted that they hadn't seen anything in the water around them. The mystery was solved in the summer of 1955, when a five-year-old boy died on one of the beaches. The boy was playing in the shallow water when suddenly, without making a sound, he collapsed into the water. When the parents ran up to him, he was already dead. Dr. Hugo Flecker, a biologist working on the shore, told the local lifeguards to cordon off the child's place of death with nets and retrieve everything they could find in the water. Dr. Flecker's catch included marine plants, shrimp, small fish, and several non-dangerous jellyfish. At the end of the study, when the biologist was losing all hope to find anything, he came across a small and completely transparent jellyfish that he had never seen before. Hugo Flecker realized that it was the same Irukandji demon and sea wasp. On the table in front of him was a typical specimen of the Cubozoa class, commonly called the box jellyfish. The lower corners of these boxes have a bunch of tentacles hanging from them. This specimen is different from the rest of its class because of its incredible transparency. 
When put in the aquarium, this jellyfish is virtually invisible and can only be seen under UV lights. The tentacles of this creature have stinging cells, nematocysts, which contain the deadly venom that causes excruciating burns and death. The jellyfish got named Hironex. But now it's time to talk about the tights that are so popular among the swimmers off the coast of Queensland. It turned out that Hironex doesn't always sting. The analyzer cells located on the tentacles tell the jellyfish whether it has come across a living object or not. If it is a live object, which makes it potential prey, the stinging cells release venom. But if it is an inanimate object, the nematocysts don't react. This is the feature of the hero necks that the divers, surfers, lifeguards, and just regular swimmers put to use. Touching the nylon fabric, the Hedonex recognizes humans as inanimate objects and doesn't react to them. That's why Queensland's lifeguards put on two pairs of tights before going into the water, one on their legs and the other one, making an opening for the head, on their hands and upper body. Australian companies immediately saw this as an opportunity to earn money and began to produce the Stinger suits, special tight suits made of nylon covering for the whole body but they aren't in high demand since they cost over $100, which is 10 times more expensive than two pairs of cheap tights. That's why the common female clothing items are preferred over the specialized gear in Queensland, and seeing swimmers in tights on the beach is only surprising to the tourists. Thanks for watching. Like the video, and we'll see you next time.